pizza. What's up everyone? It's Goose and today was 20 degrees cooler than yesterday. And today we're going to look at the latest update for the Fractal FM9 that's currently in beta. This update was actually significant though because it included the new Cygnus X3 update. And I don't know if I'm pronouncing Cygnus correctly, but what the update does is update all the amp models to be more realistic according to Fractal's documentation. So I took some samples before I did the update and then after the update to see what the differences are. So specifically today we're going to compare differences in amp tones but I'm also gonna get into what I think about having updates this frequent in an ecosystem for a modeler. Before we move on, if you like comparisons on Guitar Gear and just nerding out about Guitar Gear in general, consider hitting like and subscribe. All right, so the preset we're gonna be looking at is actually my main preset. So what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna look at the three amps that I usually use on there. Uh, the three amps are gonna be the Orange 8030, which is my clean tone, the Friedman BE 2010, which is my crunch tone, my crunch slash rock tone, and then uh, the PRS Archon, which is my high gain tone. And you're gonna see my entire signal chain, but we're gonna be um, turning off the reverbs and delays and all the other effects after the cab. And we're gonna mostly be focused on the amp models and how they've been updated and if they sound any different at all. I do run overdrives in front of all of these as well as a compressor for the clean, just to give it more sustain and a little bit more tightness. And I'm gonna keep all the settings the same before and after the update. So after the update, I actually just basically loaded the preset and I resaved it just to make sure it did update and um, it actually did because the volumes actually changed. Uh, all my amp models actually changed in volume a little bit. So um, I'm gonna put on screen right now the differences in correction of uh, the levels that I had to do for each of the amp models. I didn't touch the levels in the fractal themselves. I did it in post, um, but on the screen right now, you'll see how much DB I had to compensate um, after the Cygnus X3 update for each of the amp models. I'm also gonna be using the same guitar for this. It's gonna be my FGN Iliad 7 with uh, Seymour Duncan Pegasus in the bridge. So yeah, we're gonna do clean tones, rock tones, and metal tones. Uh, we're gonna start with the clean tones. Again, it's an orange 8030 clean channel. And uh, that one will have a compressor and a, I believe it's an MXR micro boost in front of it. And so yeah, let's get into it. All right, so the differences here are pretty subtle, but there are two things that stand out immediately when I compared the two. The first is that when you're attacking the strings, that attack feels more um, like there's more impact to it. So this sounds kind of weird, but I hope this makes sense. It feels like there's more of that like speaker in a cabinet impact to it. So especially if you're attacking kind of higher chords, uh, chords that might sound thin in the Cygnus X2, I actually feel like there was just a bit more thump to them. Uh, the other thing is I feel like everything just feels slightly bigger. Uh, I'm going to be saying this a lot for the other comparisons as well, but I feel like there's a slight 3D effect to it. Like I feel like there's more space to um, the notes and the, the way that the guitar is sounding uh, back to my ears, at, playing back to my ears at least. I feel like there's just a bit more of a 3D-ness to it. And again, it's a very subtle difference, but especially when you're playing, I feel like you would feel it the most. All right, so let's move on to some rock tones. Uh, again, this is gonna be the Friedman BE 2010, and there's going to be a TS-808 in front of it. <laughs>
All right, so my thoughts on the Freedman. I think the Freedman actually had the most differences between Cygnus X2 and X3. I think that just in general, modelers have a hard time with more mid-gain amps. Um, sometimes you can get it too splashy, too gainy sounding or a little bit flat sounding. And I think that it's hard for modelers to capture that mid gain tone. And I think they've improved it here. Um, I think the X2 sounds a little bit more splashy and a lot of the chords seem to kind of met, like distort into each other. I don't know if that makes any sense, but the notes in the chords tend to not be as clear. And I think that while it sounds like the gain is dialed back slightly on this model, I think that when you're playing it, it feels like there's the same amount of gain, but it's actually clearer uh, as well. And I think that there's more low end punch, just kind of like what I was mentioned with the clean, uh, with the 8030. But uh, it was still the same amount of like tightness in the feel when you're playing it. And again, there's just more 3D-ness. I think that's maybe why it's clearer. There's just a bit more um, depth to the sound now. And you can hear a lot of the different like nuances of the chords a lot more clearly. And I don't think that this is as subtle as the other two, in my opinion. I think this one actually is a big improvement. And kudos to Fractal for this, because this is some of the best sounding tones I've gotten out of a digital Friedman model. All right, so lastly, let's move on to some high gain, like metal riffs. We're gonna be on extended range riffs on this one. And yeah, a PRS Archon with a TS-808 in front of it again. <laughs> All right, so the PRS Archon changes, I think, like the 8030, I think it was just slightly more subtle. Uh, the things I just noticed from before, so like the 3D-ness of the sound, as well as like sort of note separation, I feel like are just better in the new one by a little bit. And so the general tone is the same, but if you listen really closely, I feel like individual notes just have more space to them. And that adds to that like 3D feel that I was talking about earlier with the other amp models. Um, it's almost like you can feel like there's a speaker thumping in a cabinet. And that might sound kind of like an overstatement a little bit, but I do think that it just makes it feel a lot better to play. Um, and while what you're hearing might be subtle, uh, what you're feeling is actually kind of noticeable. Again, it's subtle, but usually we're chasing that last 5% of a tone. So this is actually really welcome in my opinion. But I wanted to touch on something else that was in my mind when I was updating this unit, and that was, what if it sounds worse? And I say this because there was actually a Friedman model. I was using the Friedman V1 before, and there was a beta update that made it sound different. And it wasn't worse, but it wasn't quite to my taste. And that's why I moved over to the Friedman BE 2010 model. And I was worried that with the Cygnus X3 update that they were going to ruin some models that I really liked. Um, and sometimes having an update to an amp model is nice because uh, with some of the other modelers, so like for example, the Quad Cortex, some of the 1.0 models don't sound that great anymore and they, don't, haven't, and they haven't gone back and updated those. But with Fractal, they tend to update all their old amps. And sometimes it can change the sound of an amp, um, but for this, 
it's a little bit more subtle and it's just uh, I guess it's kind of a quality of life kind of thing like it just helps with the feel of playing and luckily even with the Friedman BE 2010 model this update didn't affect those too drastically and that leads to the conversation of what is better sounding and what isn't better sounding because I feel like a lot of times when we go from like an older version to a newer version of something uh, you might have been used to something that's older so like you might have been used to Let's, let's say Axe FX 2 sounds versus Axe FX 3 sounds. You could Axe FX 3, or I guess FM9 in this case, and you're like, oh, these amps don't sound the same as what I remember. And that is something that I've always been afraid of with constant updates, and Fractal does do a lot of updates. And so uh, I get afraid of that because what if the amps that I was used to using don't sound the same anymore? But luckily the X3 update didn't really change too much. Again, it's a subtle change in terms of what you play back and hear. But when you're playing as a guitarist, I think it's something you're going to notice uh, in terms of feel, and I think it's for the better. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. Uh, do you get worried if updates to existing amp models change an amp model you're used to too much? Or do you think you just welcome any changes because um, generally speaking, they are trying to improve their product as much as they can. But yeah, let me know in the comments down below, and I think that's going to do it for me today. Hope you all enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Later!